Hello everyone. This video is a reference video uh, for students who are learning Pinan Shogun Kata, which is one of the first kata that is taught in most Shudikan systems. So we're we'll talking about uh, Wado or Shotokan uh, primarily, but also other systems will include this. Some derivatives of Kaiku Shinkai will also teach uh, versions of the Pinan Kata. The Pinan Kata were developed by Anku Totsu, who created the forms. You may know the version of this kata by a different name, for example, Heian Nidan or Heian Shodan, uh, if you practice Shotokan. Uh, it was Gichin Funakoshi who changed the name from Pinan to Heian, uh, which was a less Chinese sounding name uh, from bringing karate to, uh, or well, spreading karate in mainland Japan. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a version of Pinan Shodan, which I teach as a basic form. Um, emphasis on two things with this. Number one, this is only the basic form of the kata. Uh, I'm not going to stress emphasis on things like uh, rhythm and timing. Uh, I'm not really going to discuss application in this video. Uh, I'm simply going to demonstrate the basics of the solo form and highlight some key points uh, that if you're learning the kata for the first time you should probably pay attention to. Uh, so with that in mind this video may not be appropriate for people who are uh, more advanced students um, just as a, as a sort of a pre-warning. However, hopefully if you're starting your karate journey, this video will be useful to you and will give you some reference points that you can go back to. Uh, but also what I would say, even if you're learning a different style, is perhaps using it as a reference to then ask the question, okay, well, why are there differences? Uh, try to understand those differences um, as you go through, uh, which then hopefully can encourage conversation uh, back at your own dojo with your own sensei. Uh, so I hope this is helpful uh, and we will do the kata. So, Pinan Shola. Bow, day, roi. So the first move of Pinan Shoda uh, for us drops into Kokusudachi. Uh, the left foot goes out, but rather than uh, having your weight go in that direction, like this, you want to try and make sure that your hara, your center, drops straight down. So if you use the knot of the belt as a reference point, I want this to drop down, so my weight is going to have to go through this knee. Uh, because I'm going to drop into Kokusudachi backstands, this foot is going to be pointing. Uh, about 45 degrees when I drop into the stance. So we start in Yoadachi, this foot is going to be pointing that way, and my left foot is going to be pointing straight in the direction that I'm going. So from there, look, and then drop. So the body will slightly turn as the hip engages the block, uh, but the emphasis is on the belt, not on the belt dropping, as opposed to this. You don't want too much excessive weight on the front foot in this uh, version of the cover. Um, so you're going into back stance, the feet need to be in a straight line. Now, as I mentioned, certain techniques in this kata, I will refer to them uh, using gross generalizations. So, uh, for example, the position of the arms in the first move uh, is akin to sotoyuki or jodanuki, uh, but that in no means suggests that the bunkai application is explicitly those two techniques. This is only a reference point for you to have visualization when practicing and learning the kata in its fundamental form. So, look, sotoyuki and jodanuki. So, by that logic, this arm should be slightly past the center line should not be here, uh, and this needs to be slightly above the head, this is too low. It also should not look messy, so the arm shouldn't sort of form like a trapezium, it should come nice and clean across. Uh, I sort of try and visualise it as sort of a rectangle type shape. The top hand then comes down underneath. Uh, in the version of the kata that I teach, this arm remains stationary, some versions pull this in, but this should remain stationary, and then we pull back Tetsui, so you return to your Yodachi uh, uh, your dati uh, stance, uh, and you've got the tetsui level of the arm. Uh, some styles will have this higher, but others, just in terms of cleanliness, uh, just to keep the kata clean as a basic form, it's just a level of the uh, arm. Then look, and you repeat the same move in the opposite direction. Soto uki jodanuki, arm comes down, and then draw back tetsui. Just when you transition between those two moves, just make sure that when you go from the left to the right, you don't lift this arm over the top. So you look, and it comes, it, there's a slight drop and then a lift again. So one, two, three. Then from there, look. This left foot remains stationary. You pivot, bringing the right foot up into uh, the preparation for my knee. So if I do this in the opposite direction, so from here, look, here. So the hand pulls into the body, and I block across, soft uki, and then my and put the foot down next to my other support foot. 
a lot. The hand that comes across and covers here as the other hand opens. As I come out into my top printed out scene, you then come across, block, shoot or uh, So from this direction. So just key points in our basic version of shoot or uke. You are in Kokuitadachi, which is back stance. The feet should be in a straight line. The arm position is neither too low nor vertical. It should be in the middle, approximately 45 degrees. When transitioning between the block in our basic form, the hand position is for us is this. The front hand drops, covers, and as you land, this foot comes across, blocks, rotates, just past the center line. Uh, so you end in this posture. Uh, this arm is, if I was to flatten it, would sit just over my sternum, so just below, rather than uh, too low, uh, so here, uh, and the arm is flat, and the spine is nice and straight. Um, obviously we use Kokuzidachi, other styles may do uh, even variations on Kokuzidachi, uh, or um, neck uh, cat stance. So following the turn from the first shito, you then step through, shito one, Shito two, and then step through, nukte uh, and kiai. So nukte is uh, spear hand, the back hand for us is a fist. So wakishimaru, pull the elbow in nice and tight, it shouldn't be sticking out. Uh, other systems will have this hand underneath, but for us, this is here. Then we lock, pivot the back foot. So in the basic version of the kata, this foot remains still, this is the one that moves, and you turn, shuto uke. So from here, and turn. From here, again, step forward, shoot up. So two, one, two, 45 degrees, lock, cover, come across, shoot to the other corner. Shoot to the other corner. Then lock, come across, yaku sotuki, yaku meaning reverse sotuki, uh, sotuki meaning outer block. Uh, for us, this is sotuki, uh, outer block as opposed to uchiuki. Uh, our reasoning for that, uh, because in some systems it's, they're called the other way around, uh, is that it's in reference to the centre line. So because the arm is moving away from uh, the centre line, it's out of block, saltuki, whereas for us, uchiyuki, inner block, comes towards my centre line. Uh, the reason some systems have it the other way around is based upon the starting position. So in other words, uh, when this, this is described as inner block, it's because it starts on the inside the outside, and when this is described as outer block, it's because it starts on the outside and comes in, uh, so that's the difference. But for us, this is sotoyuki, outer block, uh, in this case, yaku sotoyuki, because it's my reverse hand. For us, the position of the legs is uh, heel and toes in a straight line, nice and wide, yakuzuki no tukomidachi. The hips are not square, rather than being here, you want to make sure that you come across with a rotation on the hips, so the body is as narrow as possible. Um, and you turn so that you block just past the centre line, not too far. So again with this movement, coming across, here, getting the hip right through, and then from there use that tension in the Mayagedi and then landing Gyakuzuki. The stance is Gyakuzuki Dati. From there we do a block on the spot, Sotoyuki. Uh, the hand shouldn't, when you do the block, just turn. So you want to create a bit more power, so you come back to the hip. As you do this, you're going to emphasize the shoulder going that way as the hand goes that way. Another point is to try and press the feet to create a bit of a drop without letting the knee sort of drift out too far. You want to try and keep the knee so that it's straight. That creates tension here in the hip to then let the next mind get you through and land in Yaku again. From there, we step forward more alto you get, uh, where the hand supports augmented forearm block. For us, the hand position is here. Uh, some styles it's there, but for us, it's in this position. Then uh, we look, come round, get on right. So look from this position, look, get on right, low block, step forward, jaw down you get, look, get on right, step forward. Jaw and uke, and then pull back, look to the front, feet together, and then raise. So, if you need to watch that again, 
please feel free to and go back and have a look at the details of the cutter. This is only the basic form of the cutter, but it's important the sort of points that I've emphasised, certainly for students doing their first grading, in my job job, it's important that you pick up on these points uh, because those are the kind of things I'm looking for at the absolute basic level of the cutter. So we're talking about orange bell level uh, for this cutter. So um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to more week videos, we do videos every Friday. So please feel free to subscribe uh, by clicking the link or clicking the little Daniel Pyatt icon in the bottom right hand corner of the video. So uh, if you want any other videos, please do ask as well in the comments below, guys. See you soon.